All right. How's everyone doing this morning? Bear with me. I'm still eating my pregame meal, I guess is what you'd call it. I made a uh, homemade pizza and some cheese curds. I'm still trying to finish that up. I, my bike ride this morning went longer than I was expecting. I rode my bike for three hours. But you guys are going to see me watch a TCU game on the stream. It should be starting any minute now. I still got educational kids programming on my ABC. I should probably do this before the stream starts. Get all this set up. All right. Order of ops. So half of my pizza is triple pepperoni, and the other half is pepperoni, jalapeno, cream cheese, and sausage. Or not sausage, cilantro. I'm looking for the bet frame out file. In the uh, this file, dude. What what the hell is this on ABC right now? Oh yeah, that's right. Direct TV is always behind. Seriously, this is why I'm this is why I'm deleting Direct TV stream after today. Like I was still seeing kids programming, and the TCU game had already started. See, that's BS. Direct TV stream. Yeah, the TCU line was weird all week. Texas was probably the biggest public play of the week. Everyone was on Texas, but the line didn't move. Or actually, kind of, I saw it at three and a half. So, I don't know. I'm a TCU guy, and honestly, I don't know. Yeah, I still have college game day on this stream. Come on. These cheese curds, you know, they turned out pretty good. The lesson I learned, though, is you want to eat them right after they come out of the fryer. They're still good, though. Let's see. We're ready to go. Perfect.
All right, so I lost the under, or I lost, no, that game definitely went under. Why is it saying it's a loss? Houston Tulsa went under last night, and it's grading it as a loss. I went through the same thing last week. I forgot why that happens. How you doing, Big Troy? Yeah, I won my only bet last night under in Tulsa, Houston, but it's saying right here it's a loss, which is not the case. And I'm going to go get the rest of my pizza and finish that off. Yeah, everybody's against TCU today. I don't know anyone who's on TCU. Houston Tulsa, though, absolutely went under. And it's saying it's a loss. I'll fix it when I'm done eating. Uh, kickoff return. Kickoff return. We're going to go all the way to open the game with a touchdown. No, he's out of bounds at the 10. No flags. No flags. I haven't been to a TCU home game since I was a player. Even though now I live in... I haven't been able to because I haven't lived in Fort Worth since then, but now that I do, I just... Me and my dad were going to go today until we lost last week. If we didn't lose last week, we would be there right now. Because like all my dad's friends from TCU, you know, the ones that he played with, they all flew in for the game, and I, was, I had lunch with them yesterday and stuff. This is the thing, though. We had a return just like that last week against SMU, and we had to settle for a field goal because of bad play calling. So I'll be very surprised if we actually score a touchdown here. Why is Zach Evans not getting the ball? Seriously. That was our standard uniform. Yeah. Zach Evans got the ball. And he got, he's going, see, that's why Zach Evans needs to get the ball more. That is exactly why Zach Evans needs to get the ball 25 to 30 times a game. He was stopped four yards behind the line of scrimmage and scored a touchdown off of it. See, last week we had a fourth and one against SMU. We were down by seven. Fourth and one. We did not give him the ball. It gets blown up in the backfield. That is why Zach Evans needs to get the ball more. I'm sorry. Zach Evans can be another Reggie Bush or Derry McFadden type player. We need to be running the offense around him. I'm sorry. He's too good to not... 
We only gave him six touches in the second half against SMU. Six. Six. All right, why isn't my thing working? Hold on. My spreadsheet's not working. Oh, that's why. Here's why. The good old abort. Remember that? Haven't seen that in a while. I love making homemade pizza. Mainly because I'm a big cheese guy, and every, even if you ask for extra cheese at a pizza place, they never give it to you. How are you going to know what's extra and what's not, right? And I get it, because cheese is a very expensive, uh, cheese is a very, there's like probably the biggest cost of a pizza, so of course they're going to keep it down. But if you make it yourself, I also made the dough from scratch too. But if you make it yourself, and I got the pepperoni sliced at the deli instead of buying like the Hormel prepackaged stuff. There we go. All right, now we're good. Ah, secondary getting beat, man. How is Texas already at the 40? Sorry, I haven't been paying attention. Yeah, that, that Popeye's video I did the other night was kind of like, because I got such a late start on that Thursday video and I still hadn't eaten anything that day. I was like, I'll just combine them. See, there's our defensive line getting blasted five yards off the ball again. Looks like the defensive line isn't any better this week. Get off your blocks. Same soft video. Yeah, Thomas Dunlap, because I forgot to stop the streaming, uh, my broadcasting software. I forgot to stop it. And I don't know why it picked that video of all of them. But yeah, the same soft defense as last week. I don't see... So we were supposed to get um, some defensive linemen back from last week, and they're not, they're not in there. I don't see them. Yep. Actually, it looks like Corey Bethley's back, but the linebackers aren't doing their jobs. Our linebackers are terrible. Yeah, I don't see Kari Coleman. Oh, yeah, this is the same defensive line as last week, the same crap defensive line as last week. And the linebackers aren't there either, so it's pretty much the entire front seven on defense, or front six.
Where are the linebackers at? They're not filling the holes. The defensive line actually isn't getting pushed back as far as they were last week so far, but the linebackers are not there. Yeah, I think I'm done with the pizza. I'm going to go get that. At, at the next commercial break, I'm going to go get my uh, ice cream. False start. Yes, false start. He was moving before the rest called it. But they're still going to run it here. Watch. There's no need for Texas to pass. None. All right, watch the linebackers. Number 13 and 25, those are our two linebackers. Oh, there's the pre- yeah, that a boy. All right, see, see? Tyree Horton, untouched. Awesome. Why is that guy wearing a mask? Why is TCU fan in the stands wearing a mask? Making us look bad. All right. Hey, hold him to field goal. Oh, oh, I'll, he almost missed that. But hey, we didn't do that last week. We didn't hold the field goals last week. All right, I'll be right back. I'm going to go get some ice cream. All right, this is the infamous, uh, this is the infamous Bluebell Bride's Cake flavor. My sister bought it for me last night. <coughs> it's uh, for a reason. Mm, so good. Oh, 
But um, it, last year it was a new flavor for Blue Belt, and so I couldn't find it anywhere. I was there for Thanksgiving last year, and I was looking all over Kingdom Come for it and could not find it. And I finally found it like a few days before Christmas last year. But now Blue Bell added it as a permanent flavor. And it's not like rare anymore. You can find it everywhere now. But my sister doesn't know that because she didn't live in Texas. And so she's in town for my niece's birthday and she saw it at the grocery store last night and bought it for me. And I told her, thank you. I I'm appreciative. I like this flavor. However, it's a permanent flavor now. It's almond flavored ice cream with a Cream cheese, amaretto swirl, and cake pieces. Anything almond or pistachio I will eat. All right, let's see if... What the heck was that? What the heck was... Okay, yeah, defensive holding. I was about to say, that guy was getting held. Answering Anthony's, Anthony Fiola's question, um, it's not only games that have already been completed this week, but it's also like projections of the current games, but these, it, the numbers will drop because obviously the projections are based off of how I projected it before the game. So naturally they're going to start out as green. Um, and basketball, I actually wouldn't start doing projections until like 10 minutes have passed. I should do that for football as well, just so we don't have all these false positives. Why are we passing so much? Yeah, I agree, Bobby Robinson. The public, the dogs. I was telling that to people all week. They're like, ooh, Arkansas is ranked number eight. How are they? It's 18 points dogs. I'm like, because the odds makers don't use polls. Like, Arkansas, Arkansas is not even a top 30 team in my rankings. Come on, Max. Come on, Max. Jeez. Gee, that could have been, that would have been a big play if he catches that. But yeah, I should probably make it to where it doesn't do projections until a certain number of time has passed. Because it always starts out with all these false positives. At least we got a good pun out of it. You better go get that ball. Yes. The, especially this season, Anthony, because of how hard preseason estimates were to do. As much real data as possible is beneficial. Watch Texas get a 98-yard drive here that looks effortless. Watch. I oh, wait. Kari Coleman's in the game, so our defensive, uh, all Big 12. The Big 12 fresh defensive freshman of the year from last year is in. He, he missed last week's game. So both of our all Big 12 defensive linemen that didn't play last week are in now.
All right, big third down here. Yeah. But yeah, I was telling people all week, like, ignore the AP poll. We play a 4 2 5 regime. 4 2 5. Get him. He, yo, big play. Big play. That was a big defensive stand right there. We got pressure on the defensive line because the two, all Big 12 defensive linemen that missed last week's game, were in on that play. Great play by number seven. Gary going to call timeout? Yeah. He got it. Come on, Sharp. So Coach Sharp is our special teams coordinator, and he did not have 11 guys on the field. Yeah, I just remember when I was doing my preseason estimates this year, I had to do it different than I normally do because of COVID super teams and COVID years ruined a lot of stats from last year. Man, Wisconsin's defense is so good, but their offense is so bad. <clears throat> Does anyone here work at um, Popeye's? Because I ordered three chicken sandwiches from there the other night, and they gave me one. This is the first time I've eaten since that Popeye's meal the other night. I didn't eat it all yesterday. It was tough because I went over to uh, my mom's and she made chicken, her chicken spaghetti, which is really good. And they also had the ice cream and brownies and everything. And I had to just sit there and not eat it. I fast two days a week and yesterday is one of them. I fast every Sunday and then one day during the week. Usually depends on what I have going on that week and everything. So after I'm done eating this, I won't eat again until Monday. Basically on Saturday, my rule is I can eat whatever I want <clears throat> um, in an hour. So I, when I take the first bite, I start the clock, and whatever I can eat in an hour is what I eat. All right, I'm going to eat one of these brownies, and that will be that. Yeah, it's like my mom gave me this half gallon of ice cream, or... My sister gives me the half gallon of, a gallon of ice cream, and my mom gives me like six brownies. I'm like, I don't want all those. But no one else is going to take them, so. Targeting, are you serious? No way. What they call targeting here, we're... Oh, get me out of here. We finally make a good defensive play and they screw us.
That's BS, man. Absolute BS. Football in both sports was better when there's no targeting. Of course, they get a long run right after that bullcrap call. Garbage, garbage. Football is better when there's no targeting. That should be my next truth video. Football's like flag football now, especially in the NFL. You can't even touch the quarterback anymore. And people wonder why I don't watch the NFL. That's a major reason. Great tackle, number nine. Bull crap. Absolute garbage, refs. My freshman year, we were playing Texas Tech. And one of our safeties committed like an absolute kill shot on one of their receivers. The stadium went nuts. That today he would have got ejected for targeting. Out of all right, see, look, we're actually playing with some fire. These refs, man, screw them. All right, got to get off the field on passing downs. We haven't been able to do that. We're dead last in the Big 12 on passing down success rate. Oh, I got... Ah, oh, crap. See? Oh, he, he spotted him short, but they're going to go for it. That should be my next Thursday Truth video about targeting and why it's ruined football. He didn't get it. He did not get it. Nope, nope. Oh, okay. Then the second push, he got it. Ha, did anyone see that replay? That was a false start. That was a false start. Just like last week. Just like last week. Just like last week. Unable to get off the field on third downs and poor defensive line play.
Yeah, we stopped him on Zodwick. We stopped him on third down, and then the bullcrap targeting call kept the drive alive. And then Texas ends up scoring on the drive because our defensive line sucks. Seriously, no, NFL is crap these days because you can't touch quarterbacks anymore. All these quarterbacks putting up these numbers wouldn't have been able to do it 10 years ago. But since it's flag football now, they don't have any fear of getting hit. Dak Prescott 10 years ago wouldn't be anything. No, the refs, the refs, uh, we only had nine guys on the field, but um, the refs called the targeting from the booth. Yeah, our line, but this is the worst I've ever seen our linebackers. Like, we've had freshman linebackers in the past, but they're not this bad. And these aren't freshmen either. Um, the, the, the booth would have stopped the punt without the timeout. Crap, man. I told you. We have actually make a good third down stop for a change, something we didn't do last week. Our defensive line is just as bad as they were last week. That's the problem. And the linebackers suck, too, so... When the defensive line sucks and then the linebackers can't fill holes, it's going to be tough. The Wisconsin offense has been bad all year. I mean, yeah, he's a, sadly, he's the best QB. There's nobody else. There's no backup. That, that's good, better. See? We can't tackle. We can't tackle. We can't get off blocks. It's not a good uh, ooh, flea flicker for Michigan. And they have a guy, touchdown. But... Um, Can't get off blocks, can't tackle, that's not a good recipe. Why can't we get off blocks? Stupid, man. That, that targeting call changed the entire game. I told you guys about Arkansas. I told you guys. Let's 
See, even when there's nothing there, Zach Evans can go for six, seven yards. Come on, Zach Evans. There you go. See? And we weren't given we didn't give this guy the ball in the second half last week against SMU. Seven point eight yards of carry, and he gets the ball six times in the second half last week. Trick play. Oh, come on. Why? Why? Every time we run a trick play, we turn the ball over. Every time. Every time we run trick plays, that happens. Every time. Every time. They never work. The fact that they are ranked number eight, people look at the AP poll and assume that that's actually an accurate ranking of teams. No, he was worried, you know, at, at that point, that trick play was dead. I would have just been like, screw it, yeah. I would have just said, screw it. And even if he caught that reverse, he would have gotten blown up anyway. There has to be like an abort, abort mechanism on those trick plays. All right, third down. Yeah, anybody who thinks the AP poll is an accurate ranking of teams is an idiot. People just saw, oh, number eight, they're 18 point dogs and they're number eight in the country. Ugh. This is a horrible matchup for Arkansas, horrible matchup. All right, great third down stop. See, we're, we're, our third down hasn't been bad. Like, that, remember that horrible targeting call, right? That's what I said, Anthony Field. That's what I said. Like, we always run trick plays at the dumbest times. Like, they almost always come when we're already moving the ball fine. And, yeah, it drives me crazy. Like, you run a trick play, like, after a momentum switch or, like, after a turnover, you don't do it. When you're already moving the ball, Will. Crap. All right, let's see how I'm doing. Which bets do I have out right now? So I have Georgia Tech plus three and a half and money line. I have Tennessee money line. I have Texas money line, even though I'm not rooting for it. So those are the bets I have out right now. And the bet I had pre before the week was under on the Houston-Tulsa game, and that did go under. I, yeah, this is a horrible... What was Arkansas li literally going to do? They, they have no passing game. So did people really think that Arkansas was just going to run it against Georgia? <laughs> like, was that what people saw in Arkansas? 
People thought Arkansas could just run the ball. Uh, Georgia Tech's looking better than they were. All right, Zach Evans is not in the game. Zach, I mean, even, I get, I get it. Even if Zach Evans not getting the ball, it's nice to have him in so the defense can, like, dedicate resources to him. There you go, QJ. He was committed to Texas, number one. He was committed to Texas, and then we, we got him to flip. Oh, flag. Oh, Duggan's horrible at deep balls. He's been bad all year. Against SMU, he was overthrowing guys. Against Cal, he was overthrowing guys. Duggan's been terrible on any pass beyond um, six, seven yards, yards this year. I don't know, Wisconsin, man, they're, uh, they're on the ropes already. It's like, you know, they're off. They can't fall, fall behind double digits. They're on the ropes. Arkansas is done. Stick a fork in them. Like, how are they going to score? You got to give credit to Texas there for defending that. Um, When we, we ran that play at TCU, it was called, uh, it was called Pearl. All right. They just defended it well. I mean, there's nothing we did wrong. Oh, how did he hang on to that? He did the same thing last week against SMU. He hung on to a, a ball after he got crushed. Got the wind knocked out of him. Appreciate it, Mr. Valenterama. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, follow my picks and you'll win, but at the very least, you can f they're free. And it sure as hell beats paying a tout who I guarantee you is not putting this much effort into theirs. He just got the wind knocked out of him. Andy Dalton. The thing is about Andy is that he was... He got thrown into the fire as a freshman. They played him as a freshman, and he was just, I mean, you know, his first ever true road game was at Texas in 2007, just into the fire, back when Texas was, you know, still pretty good. But Andy didn't really start coming into his own until about, we played, um, BYU in 2008, when BYU was ranked number eight, or they were undefeated, um, they were ranked number eight, and uh, that was Andy Dalton's coming out game. And ever after that is when he became the quarterback that we expected him to be. He wasn't really highly recruited. He was just a two-star recruit. His only other, he had two offers. He had TCU and UTEP. Those were the only two offers he had. It's not like he was a big high school recruit. That was a, that was a terrible. Oh man, there is there is times his freshman year, like we lost to Wyoming, uh, his freshman year, like it was it was a red it was our redshirt freshman year. I was the same age as him, so I was there every year he was there. But um, yeah, we lost to Wyoming, Air Force, like his freshman year because he was so inconsistent, but. He had, the, he had the upside. He just wasn't really able to achieve, get to that next level until that BYU game in 2008. Yeah, that game against Texas, we actually were winning 10 0 at halftime um, for our freshman year. We were up 10 0, and then. Uh, 
we, but we just couldn't do enough offensively. And eventually Texas started to take advantage of our um, turnovers. But yeah, we were up 10 nothing at halftime in that game. And the only reason Texas played us that year is because they knew we were going to have a freshman quarterback. They wouldn't have played us otherwise. But that's the thing. We lose to Texas in a kind of a heartbreaker, and then five days later we play a Thursday night game at Air Force. And, man, that was, that was a tough one. I didn't personally play against J.J. Watt, but he was on the other team that we played against in the Rose Bowl. There you go, Duggan. There you go, J.D. Spielman. All right. All right. Yeah, J.J. Watt, if you ever watch Rose Bowl highlights that year, watch our second touchdown and how Andy outran J.J. Watt to the end zone on a simple zone read play. How, how did I still can't believe Arkansas, I was telling people all week, like everyone thought Arkansas on the points was free money. I was like, no, my models all had Georgia. Yeah, all my, all six. All, or all seven had Georgia covering the 18 and a half. All seven. My dad hates Texas. I think I talked about this a couple of weeks ago in Arkansas. I was killing him. But my dad had a scholarship offer to Texas. I think this is a story. I might be wrong. But my dad was a two-sport athlete in high school, football and baseball, and he was good at both. And Texas offered a scholarship to my dad, and he was going to go pitch with Roger Clemens at Texas. But then my dad got sick his senior year, and they pulled it. And so that's why my dad ended up going to TCU instead. And ever since then, he's hated Texas. Like, he grew up a big Texas fan, like Earl, big Earl Campbell fan. So my dad really hates Texas. So he's been looking forward to this one all week. The reason we're not watching it together is just because uh, um, we have my niece's party after this. So, And he, he, works, he works overnights right now. Like his his job, he he does it like from like all the way to like seven in the morning. So I, I wanted him to get some sleep before my niece's party. <laughs> He'll be able to watch it with me next week. We have a night game. <laughs> Why aren't we kicking it out of the end zone? Holding, holding. Dude, are, why are, A, why are we not kicking it out of the end zone? And B, why is our kick return coverage so bad today? And C, why didn't they call holding? I just want to know what people are, like, if you actually watched Arkansas this year, there you go. It was holding. They missed the holding, but you know they got the uh, betting tips. The the thing with neural network is that they're the hardest to train. Um, meaning, like sometimes you'll train a neural network and it won't converge. But if you have the if you have the computing resources and the patience, then yeah, neural networks can be really good. Yeah, my dad was a kicker at TCU. 
And he, he was a pitcher in baseball. He was a two-sport athlete at TCU. Oh, false start. They've been doing that all game. They finally called it. They, they had a false start on that third down they had earlier. Yeah, I, I just, I mean, I've watched all of Arkansas's games. Remember, we were heavily paying attention to their Rice game to open the year, and then Texas didn't really pay attention to Georgia Southern. But then uh, last week, A&M, their offense is not very good, Ar Arkansas. They can run the ball, and that's about it. And so are people honestly expecting them to run the, all over Georgia? Gosh, we cannot tackle at the first or second level. If a, just like last week, a majority of our tackles are coming from our safeties. That's not good. Uh. <laughs> Pat McAfee, yeah, what about him? <coughs> Former punter for West Virginia, NFL punter, now <coughs> heel commentator for WWE SmackDown. <laughs> Turns out Rice wasn't that good. Yeah, I thought Rice would have a, have a better start to the season. You know, I'm not saying they should have beat uh, Texas or Arkansas. I'm not saying that. Uh, but they didn't look very impressive against Texas Southern, which is a bottom 10 FCS team. So it turns out Rice really isn't... Um, I mean, they, they're in Conference USA, though, which is bad. So, I mean, Arkansas should get at least a th three points here. But Arkansas just has no passing game. That's their problem. They got kind of lucky against A&M in that uh, A&M's offense was so bad. And Texas, they just whipped them physically. I mean, that's all it was. But they're not going to whip Georgia physically. <laughs> you got to kick the field goal here. I think Cincinnati's going to win today. Yeah, Pat McAfee has a podcast and all that, yeah. Oh, yeah. We have a trainer every year that's, whose job is to just give Coach Patterson a drink of water. What's, I haven't been to Arby's in years. I wouldn't be able to answer that question. I probably haven't been to Arby's since, gosh, I couldn't tell you. It's been a long time. Oh, missed field goal for Arkansas, too. He missed that. Wide right. Man, Tennessee is all over Missouri. I was telling people Missouri's not good. I was telling that before the season started. I was like, they're not a good team. They made a bad hire, too. So they hired the Appalachian State coach, but he had only been there for a year. He inherited a strong Appalachian State program from, a, from the guy before him. It's not like he built that program. Hammer Don, what is that? 
Yeah, Pat McAfee is a anti-tout. Right? Yeah. So I just don't know what Missouri is thinking. So Scott Satterfield had the Appalachian State program playing at a high level. He goes to Louisville, and then Drinkwitz gets there. He's there for a year and pretty much keeps him stable. Like, he didn't really even accomplish anything above what Satterfield had done. He just did a typical, you know, good Appalachian State year. And then they hire him after one year? I mean, come on. What? what? Uh, seriously, what? I hate when that I hate when co- programs hire a coach who has one good year, especially when that one good year is from a program that was already s- strong. <laughs> yeah, I could see LSU and Auburn going under two. Oh, you got to pick that off, number thir- three, or D-, D winners. You got to pick that off. Come on, man. Butterfingers. He threw it right to you. <laughs> you can't ask for a better interception. See, those are the plays you got to make. Uh, hey, I'm not, yeah, I mean, it, it would have been a hard ball to catch, but still, you gotta, those are the plays you got to make in games like these. All right, big third down. They're only one of five. Let's get some pressure. Dial it up. Five in the box. Five in the box. Five in the box. Get off your blocks. Wide open. Oh, and he dropped it. Wide open and he drops it. We got lucky. Come on, we had a we dropped seven into coverage and he's still that open. Like what the heck? What the heck? Drop seven in a coverage and a guy's running free like that. Come on. Does anybody here work at Arby's? Just let it go. Let it go. Come on, day. Gosh, jeez. Why did he even try to field that? Why? You were in the five yard line, you just let it go. Why? You just let that go. Why would you even try to field that? Jeez Louise. You do not field a punt at the five-yard line. That is football 101. You learn that in peewee. Jeez. <laughs> he dropped. They're, they have a case of the drops today. Third down. A lot of big third downs today. Pick that off. Come on, Butterfingers in the secondary today. 
At least we held him to a field goal, though. I'm telling you, hold him to a field goal is something we didn't do last week. I'm surprised Texas is passing as much as they are. I want TCU to win. I didn't actually bet on Texas. I never bet against TCU. Usually I'll delete the plays from my model, though, that are betting against TCU, though, like I did with Cal. Because my model picked Cal, but I didn't play it. (laughs) But I left it in this week just because I wasn't feeling confident about our guys after losing to SMU. All right, I'm going to go get some more water. I'll be right back. I say this every week. I say this every week, but my kitchen is a total mess right now. I did make a pizza from scratch, so there's flour everywhere that I need to vacuum up. And also I use flour for the uh, cheese curds as well. It's just just a total mess in there. And I'm not gonna be able to clean it until later tonight. Yeah, we've we've pretty much gifted Texas six points and their lone touchdown drive was off that targeting call. I feel like we've, we're the better team so far. <laughs> Does anyone here work at Tom Thumb? Tom Thumb's a grocery store. Um, I'm going to watch it tomorrow, Coxavelli. From what I've heard, though, uh, many states in Newark is that it's like, it's good, but it leaves the audience wanting more. Like, they're like, there's no way they could cram everything into two hours. That's the main complaint I've heard. But I'll still watch it anyway. I, I, I have HBO Max. I'll watch it tomorrow. Oh, Arkansas had an interception and dropped it. You got to return this. There's a top golf right across the street from where I live. I don't, my thing with Top Golf, and I think I talked about this on a YouTube video of mine. I don't know which one, but uh, I hate going to Top Golf and, um, just wanting to hit balls. You can't really do that. Yeah, I agree. Should have been a mini series.
Yeah, your pit Georgia Tech under is probably dead. <laughs> I think that's an understatement. It's weird because Georgia Tech's defense has played so well the last couple weeks. Yeah, it's just that if you go, if you just want to go hit balls at Top Golf, you know, you get waited on by waitresses and they want you to buy stuff so you can tip them. So last time I went, I just went there to hit balls. And so I bought a Coke Zero because I felt bad and still tipped her 20 bucks because I don't want to be like that guy who, you know, goes there and, especially when they're on a rotation. Yeah, you could, I don't know. Do you think you could watch this, the, the movie before watching the original series, or do you think you'd be spoiled too much if you watched the movie? That's a good question. I can't answer that yet. All right, third down. You got to give it to Zach Evans here. And we did. And he gets the first down. Hi, Clara. Hi, Clara. <laughs> Reminds me of the show Drawn Together, Princess Clara. I don't know if anyone remembers that show or not. It was like an animated reality show on Comedy Central back in the mid-2000s. Every time Darius Davis has touched the ball today, something bad has happened. Yeah, I went to the top. The only time I've ever been to Top Golf was in Las Vegas. And I got the happy hour price, and it was still 50 bucks for an hour. And then I tipped her 20 bucks because I felt bad for not buying anything. So it was 70 bucks. Yeah. She gave me the Coke Zero for free because I gave her the 20. There you go. Okay, Darius Davis finally does something good. Good to know, Zodwick. Yeah, so Coxville, you're saying the movie doesn't really spoil anything? Lyman downfield. Yeah, Duggan's just not, he's so inconsistent as a pet. He's like Sam Ellinger. He's basically Sam Ellinger from Texas the past few years. He can run fine, but he can't really throw. Wow, a nice first down for Wisconsin. Yeah, good to know. Because I wanted to watch it with my mom who hasn't seen The Sopranos. <laughs> there you go, Max. See, he's a good runner. Yeah, Jay Boak, I was saying the same thing. Arkansas was definitely like... The only team that was a bigger public uh, play this week was Texas. Texas and Arkansas are the two big public bets. Ah. Uh. That's on sportsman like on number 11 for Texas there. Then throw the flag for unsportsmanlike like conduct. All right, all right. Oh, almost broke it. 
Oh, I highly recommend you watch The Sopranos Regime. It's a really good show. I watched it all in like a month. That's how hooked I was. Hundred, like all, I don't know how many episodes, like 75 or so, all, all of it in a month. Teach me how to Duggan. He, not, not able to do that until he can throw the ball better. Give the ball to Zach Evans on third and short. And they didn't. Uh, Max, you got to lean forward. Go for it. Go, go for it. Put Zach Evans in the game and go for it. Put Zach Evans in the game and go for it. Yeah, I had to take a religion class. Yep. I mean, you had to take a religion class as like a, a core class at TCU, so I took it my very first semester. It was just like a world religions class or something like that, and the professor was in Muslim. And so one night we had to go to a mosque for the class. Man, Texas gets bailed out again. Smart Money by Connick. I've never heard of it. The refs, man. The refs have come to the rescue of Texas a lot today. Oh, from this TCU's team, uh, Zach Evans for sure. Um, Quentin Johnson will be one. Uh, I could see one of their offensive linemen, Steve Avila, being a guy that goes up. Um, defense, defense has a lot of guys. Uh, both corners um, are probably going to go to the NFL. Uh, Corey Bethley on the defensive line will. So yeah, there's there's NFL talent. <laughs> Louisville Wake Forest. I have nothing in that game. He jumped He jumped off sides. Give the ball to Zach Evans. We didn't do that on fourth and one last week. Okay, we got it, but still, give the ball to Zach Evans next time on fourth and one. 
He is. Like, no, Zach Evans is really, uh, by all accounts, everything I've heard is he's a really good team player. And when you look at the type of kid he was in high school, I mean, he's, he's got, he seems like he's got his head on straight. <laughs> That's how we got him in the first place. Nobody else wanted him because he was such a character risk. No, I, I actually think George is the better team right now, Anthony. <laughs> oh, yeah, Illinois is really bad. All right, time to give the ball to Zach Evans. He hasn't gotten it in a while. Ah, there's inconsistent Duggan. Score projection in Arkansas, Georgia is 47 to 10 right now. Georgia will be tested by Florida and Alabama. That's it. S run a screen to Zach Evans. Or you can hand it off to him, but he didn't get a first down. Yeah, kick the field goal. This is where we would run a fake field goal. Watch. I wouldn't even be surprised. I keep hitting the green screen with my chair. Man, Georgia Tech, what happened to their defense? Yeah, if you saw me, I have flour all over the lower part of the shirt and on my shorts. Flour. All right, George is punting. Wisconsin can't do anything. All right, Temple's making a little bit of a rally. Yeah, I already talked about Missouri. I was like, they made such a bad coaching hire. I hate this Chick-fil-A commercial so much. I used all my Chick-fil-A points to feed a shelter. That must be a lot of Chick-fil-A points because... Like, think about how many Chick-fil-A points you need to feed an entire homeless shelter. That's a, probably a lot. Oh, 
How you doing, Eagles 01? Yeah, we should be up by more because of that stupid... Um, that stupid targeting call back in the first quarter. I don't know what the opposite George strategy is. I haven't heard of that. Oh, I, I talked about that last week. Fading a model is never a good idea. Gosh, he, our bad tackling even goes to the uh, special teams. <laughs> Um, no, I don't like betting. I just don't like tying my, I'll bet futures in college basketball, like in March and that's it. And it's not, it's not that big a rival. We probably care about Texas more than Texas cares about us. But I mean, we've played Texas probably a hundred times. <laughs> yeah. I think instead of fading a model, you make it better. That's always the best thing to do. Man, our special teams, outside of that kick return at the beginning of the game, has just been a joke today. No. Ha he tripped. No. Pick up the flag. We're getting boned by the refs today. Pick up the flag. Get out of here, man. <laughs> That's he tripped. Yeah, we have baseball. We're actually a good baseball program. No, I'm not. I'm only going to stream the morning games today. <laughs> I have a birthday party to go to. We cannot tackle. There's no need for Texas to pass. There is no need. <laughs> yep. Once again, can't tackle. Yeah, he's still the coach.
<laughs> that is a funny quote. Gosh, can't get any leverage defensively right now. They're running it. They're running it. Run blitz. Run blitz. Dang it. We knew I How do you not uh, It was clear as day they were running it there, and it didn't matter. We had our linebackers in pass coverage. Yeah, our, that's 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 always been our defense though. We don't really we go for faster guys instead of size and usually we've been fine, but this year it's been pretty bad. Was Conchin just fumble a kickoff? Garrett calls a good pitcher when he can put stuff on his fingers. <laughs> KFC sandwich commercial. It tastes like uh, it tasted exactly like the Popeyes one, guys. I thought there would be a difference, but there wasn't. The problem with the Capital One Saver card is that you have to uh, pay a $95 per year fee on it. And those grocery stores don't count Walmart and Target. Ooh, nice catch from Wisconsin there. That'll get him a field goal before half. That commercial would it would have been better if they put Cam Newton in it. <laughs> I 
Don't return it. Ooh, touchdown for Wisconsin right before half. Come on, Max. Jeez. <laughs> nope, not a catch. Come on, Max. You're just, this is just bad. Oh, boy. That's not going to do us any good. There's a flag they should have thrown earlier. Unsportsmanlike. Unnecessary roughness. How do I like my flip three? The only thing I don't like is the battery life. Everything else is fine. Yeah, we got lucky there. Yeah, that was definitely unsportsmanlike. He was committed to us. The guy number zero was committed to TCU, but then he flipped to Texas. <laughs> Yep, he was a TCU commit. Overshone. Where is Zach Evans? There he is. Or wait, where is Zach Evans? Why is he not in? Where is Zach Evans? <sighs> that was all on number 79. Gosh, I'm telling you. Zach Evans didn't touch the ball once on that drive.
How injured did Kershaw get? Let it keep bouncing, number three. Yeah, we were going to go, but after the loss last week, we decided not to. <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised Texas isn't playing with more of a sense of urgency here. Dang, that's stupid, number 20. Come on. Stupid, think. Think. I have a TV to my left, and I have a 43-inch monitor in front of me, which I divide up into four quadrants, so I have two games on the monitor. I have the chat in one quadrant, my Excel spreadsheet in one quadrant, and games in the other two. Man, that's just stupid. <laughs> Pick that off. All right, the question is, do we try to run a one-minute offense here? We have two timeouts. I would. Yeah, that should have been interference. When I played scout team at a, when I played scout team against the TCU defense, um, they would hold every time, man. Like it's like our coaches taught them to hold and like dared the refs to call it. But I would get held all the time. What the heck was that? Are we not going to call timeout? I mean, we just let 30, 20 seconds go off the clock there. Get out of bounds, one. Man, clock management.
Exactly. Yeah, they would hold me every play when I played scout team. Not just that, but whenever our, we would scrimmage, they would hold our starting receivers, and they would hate it so much. Time out. We're not a very good clock man. Like, we let 20 seconds go off the clock after that sack. Okay, now my feed freezes. Is anyone else's feed froze? This is why I'm getting rid of direct TV stream. What the heck is this? Cramp. How do you get a face mask as a lineman? <laughs> yeah, that's not a cramp. He's our best receiver. Yeah, that, that that after the replay it didn't look like a cramp. What were we doing? Committing penalties and executing bad clock management? Number fifty one. What do I say? I say, um, stop committing mental mistakes. It's the mistakes that is the reason we're losing.
Man, Georgia Tech, they had so much momentum. Yeah, he just can't throw today. <laughs> yeah, the play calling on offense could be better. Yeah, me too. Me too. Georgia Tech did not show up today. Yeah, that was so dumb, Anthony. Right, yeah, holding him to three. I had Tennessee winning uh, by 0 0.1 before the game. I had them winning. I didn't have them as dogs. That's why I bet on Tennessee plus 130. <laughs> No, I don't work at White Castle. Do you know anyone who works there? That was a blindside block on North Carolina there. Whew. I'm kind of in a food coma a little bit. <laughs> I 
White, I've never been to a White Castle. I mean, I've lived in places that had them, but i just never been. I've never been to a White Castle or Crystal. Texas is getting the kickoff. But yeah, I don't I don't know anyone who works at White Castle. I've never been. <laughs> All right, third quarter starting in the Wisconsin game. I had the Detroit style pizza from Pizza Hut and they didn't make mine very good because it looked nothing like what it looked like in that commercial. Mute. Mute. If you're watching the TCU Texas game, you know why I just muted. Mute. I have Cincinnati winning by a few. All right, now I can unmute. Yeah, I have Cincinnati winning by three. <laughs> Texas Tech. I used to enjoy the Texas Tech game a lot because they talked a lot of crap to us when we were in the Mountain West. Their fans did. But ever since we beat them 82 to 27, it just hasn't been the same. I mean, we had a pretty close game in 2015 when we were ranked number three, and they had Pat Mahomes, and we beat him at the very end on a tip pass. But uh, ever since then, it hasn't really been that fierce of a rivalry. I've never watched an episode of Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> It looked like a hostage video, big short of eight. Arkansas, their offense has done nothing today, which I'm not surprised. 
I only had him scoring 13 points in my model. Is that is, is are they going to call that sack that Michigan just had back because of a targeting call? Oh, a false start. Even with an illegal motion, they still got a pretty big sack. Yeah, that was a I mean that was a clean hit with his shoulder. <laughs> I wonder if they call targeting in high school cuz they don't have like the replay, video replay in high school. I wonder how my high school did last night. They suck. Probably lost again. No, they didn't play last night. Yeah, so Trinity is our rival, and we haven't beaten them since 1997. I was eight, no, I was nine years old the last time we beat, I hate autoplay ads so much, but we were nine years, I was nine years old the last time we beat Trinity. Like, not only have we not beaten them since 1997, we haven't come within 20 points of them. No, the closest game has been 14 points in that time span. So they've beaten us 25 straight times, and the closest game has been 14 points. It's almost always, like, lopsided. We're in the same school district. We have the same resources and budget. But the reason Trinity is so good, and we're not, like, Trinity wins state titles, and we, like, go 1-9 and nine or 2-8 and eight every year. It's because they um, – have a massive Polynesian population that lives in Euless, which is where Trinity is, um, and they all work for DFW Airport. They're all part of like the package and handling uh, logistics union, and so Trinity has like an endless supply of these massive Polynesians on their offensive and defensive lines, and we don't have the same, Bell does not have the same uh, benefit. So Trinity just runs I formation, like run the ball up the middle every play because they have these massive linemen. But anyway, that's that's a that's a Texas high school story for you. Cal preps. Yeah, I went to my high school's game on op like the first game this year, and it was ugly. And they weren't even playing a good team, but 
The problem with my high school isn't just the fact that we don't get all the Polynesians, but um, the demographics have changed big time. It used to be like 80% white, like mostly upper class, middle upper class white. And today it's like over 50% Hispanic and the Hispanic kids just don't care enough about football because a lot of them are ESL students to begin with so they don't speak English. Yeah, the Hispanics have completely taken over. I like now that I'm not I'm not being racist or anything. I'm just saying like it's not what it used to be. Like it, you the to be successful at high school football in Texas, you got to get people to buy in and like when they're young like and before they get to high school, you got to give them to like buy into the program like in middle school. And you know, you just you we that just don't exist anymore. <laughs> When you can't speak English and you're worried more about trying to learn English than you, than playing football or whatever. And another thing is the baseball coach doesn't let um, doesn't allow two way players. So the baseball coach at my high school won't let you play both baseball and football. He makes you pick, and so that also hurts because you have a lot of people who could contribute on the football field decide to play baseball. Yeah. I was trying to be careful, but what I'm trying to say is that the demographic, the truth of the matter is the most successful high schools in Texas are ones with upper class whites. That's just the tr cold hard truth about Texas high school football. Look at all the state champions and they're like 90 plus percent white upper class. Um, they all, they're all in the suburbs and they all have a lot of uh, money. Um, yeah, that's just how it is. It's a lot easier to get kids with a stable home life to buy in than it is to get a kid that doesn't know English to buy in. Oh yeah, I know. I've had this channel shut down by YouTube before. Got to be careful. All right, big defensive, got to, first of all, don't let them get a big kick return, which they've been doing all game. They've had a short field all game. <laughs> no big kick returns. Get a three and out. Yeah, Zach Evans was non-existent on the last two drives of the first half. MIA. I don't know where he was. Especially if Quentin Johnson looked like he's, he's done for the game. Why are we not kicking it out of the end zone? All right, big defensive series here. Got to get a punt. No, I haven't, Ryan Gutierrez. All right, we're back in a uh, four-down lineman set. We got some penetration there. It's just the linebackers aren't filling the holes. Linebackers, like, we can't keep having our safeties making the tackles here. <laughs> Pick that off. All right, big third down here. Yeah. 
Yeah, that was a good play by us. Yeah, he knocked it out. All right, let's get some pressure. I've seen good penetration by the D-line so far on this drive. Let's get to the quarterback. Giving TCU giving up a 100-yard rushing used to never happen, like ever. It was very rare. Get him, get him, get him, boy. All right, sack. All right, come on. Great series. Yeah, I lived in Iowa, Jay, in Cedar Rapids, and um, one thing I did notice in Iowa, though, that I, which is similar to Texas, is that the public schools are the uh, are the strong. Like every other state I lived in, it's the private schools that are the best football teams in the states, but not in Iowa and Texas. But the, I remember the good teams in Iowa when I lived there was a uh, Linmar High School. Uh, Lindmar High School is in like north of Cedar Rapids. They were they were pretty good, but they were like kind of like suburban Cedar Rapids, you know, nicer houses in that area. I don't know how it is in Western Iowa. I didn't live in the Des Moines area, but I worked at a, a restaurant in Iowa, and a lot of the kids that worked there like played football at a uh, Lindmar, uh, Marion High School. All right, there's Zach Evans. Uh, he almost broke that. He, he was close. <laughs> Michigan just score. They call him short. Fourth and goal for Michigan. Ah, Darius, you got to stretch that out. All right, third and one, give the ball to Zach Evans. It's not difficult. Michigan got it? Yeah, Michigan got it. Just give the ball to Zach Evans on third and one. They haven't stopped him for a loss all day. He always is very good at falling forward when there's nothing there. There you go. Oh, man, they keep making these shoestring tackles. It looks like Zach Evans is going to bust one. When I was at TCU, our most common uniform was what they're wearing right there. It was the purple jersey and black pants. All right, now might be a good time for play action. Yeah, I don't see Quentin Johnson. He must be done, though. What the heck was that? Buck sweep to Zach J Evans coming up. Yep, Buck sweep to Zach Evans. And he is so good. <laughs> I called the Buck sweep before it got run. And he's so good. I don't see why I don't get the ball more. Third and one, give it to Zach Evans again. <laughs> Run the short side option with Zach Evans right here. Yep, short side option. I'm good at calling these plays, aren't I? Am I good? I've called the play twice in a row. Short side option and the buck sweep. Let's see if I can go three for three. 
Man, Zach Evans is a monster on blocking today. He's been a team player. Therefore, we should reward him by giving him the ball again. <laughs> All right, I'm going with the, just a simple um, handoff to Zach Evans right here. Let's see if I can get three in a row. Simple pistol handoff to Zach Evans. Oh, no, play action. Ah, crap! Who is protecting his blind side? <laughs> Nobody saw him. Jeez. <laughs> who are the four players? But still, who is protecting his blind side there? That's one thing we didn't suck in SMU. We didn't turn the ball over, but it's killing us today. <laughs> Play action. Ugh. I mean, I, I don't mind going play action there, but no one accounted for the blind side. Ugh, cannot tackle. Number 91, if you're going to go low, wrap up. Like our guys are not wrapping up. Wrap up. Ugh. <laughs> I don't know why Texas is passing. I mean, now I do. Cannot tackle. But it's still our, the problem is our safeties are still making these tackles. <laughs> Where are the linebackers at?
He didn't get the first down. Do they go for it here? I think they do. I think they're going to go for it. Ah, oh, they're kicking. Safety blitz from Wisconsin, but they ran a screen and they got the first down. Man, turnovers. Davenport, Quad Cities. What, is, what are the four Quad Cities? Davenport, Moline, Rock Island, and Bedendorf. Am I right? <sighs> this game, man, it's not like last week. Like last week, SMU is just whipping it. So I feel like this week we're holding our own a lot more physically, but shooting ourselves in the foot. <laughs> Didn't do that. That's what we did. We did not shoot ourselves in the foot really last week. And I don't know if it's luck. I mean, holding them to field goals is a big deal. Coach Patterson says that all the time. Holding to field goals is a win. <laughs> Especially considering they've all come in on short fields. Even though I lived in Cedar Rapids, I only went to the Quad Cities once. I've had that Wendy's burger. I got it. It was it was good, but I would have I would have gone without the bacon jam. I don't think that new bachelorette is very attractive. I'm sorry. If I were cast as a bachelor in the show, I'd probably withdraw. Don't return it. Thank you. We need a big play, like a big play to shift the momentum. Screen to Zach Evans. 
Uh, Got to give Texas credit for tackling Zach Evans today. Yeah, I didn't know much about the Iowa football. I only lived there for one football season, 2014. But I remember watching their their uh, state playoffs. It looked like it was played in a dome. Um, I remember watching that on TV. From what I remember, it was played in a dome. That was almost targeting right there. I mean, if they are going to talk targeting... There's the targeting call. Yeah, I was about to say, if they're going to call it earlier, why don't they just call that? <laughs> With no targeting? <laughs> yeah, it was the UNI Dome in um, Cedar Falls. That's right. But I remember they had like, um, it wasn't six man, though. It might have been eight man, maybe? Eight man, because here in Texas they have six man at the uh, for the smaller schools, but in Iowa I'm pretty sure it was eight man from what I remember. <laughs> when I lived in Iowa, they opened a uh, Popeyes. And Cedar Rapids, and it was the first one in Cedar Rapids and Eastern Iowa in general, and it was like the biggest deal. There was a line all the way down the street for weeks. And also, um, the restaurant I worked at, it was just a Cheddar's, and they have Cheddar's everywhere in Texas. Um, but it was the first one in Iowa, and we were on a wait for four months. I made so much money working at that Cheddar's. I worked in the bar, but, um, geez. For like four months, we opened in, uh, the day after Memorial Day in 2014, and we were on a wait like all the way to October. It was just a Cheddar's, but you know, I guess in Iowa and Cedar Rapids, they like love new things. And even after we stopped being on a wait, it was still, I still made a lot of money. Why is there a commercial? Are the, what's with the commercial? Was there a timeout or something? Right, yeah, Zodwick, I was saying earlier, football is so much better without targeting. Like, I hate what the NFL has become. It's a flag football league. Like, all these quarterbacks wouldn't have been any good 10 years ago. Like, Dak Prescott wouldn't have been any good 10 years ago. I don't think Lamar Jackson would have been that good. I don't even think Pat Mahomes would have been that good 10 years ago, but since... It's flag football now, and you can't touch the quarterback. These, you know, offense is inflated. Yep. Cheddar's. It's, it's like, it's kind of like an Applebee's, but better. It's like really cheap menu prices, and that's why, like, how would you make so much money at Cheddar's when the uh, prices were so cheap? It's because I was able to get a lot of turnover in the bar. And I'd also... Uh, Close. I had worked the closing shift, so I'd get like all the late tables and uh, people at the bar. When you worked at the bar, not only did you have the people sitting at the bar, but you'd also get the high tops as well, the cocktail tables. I was able to take a serious chunk out of my student loans thanks to that job. Yeah, that was the number one selling item on the menu, the chicken tenders. Um, they showed us how to make them on, during training because, like, we hadn't, I worked there before it had opened, you know, and so they, like, made us go through all this training and stuff. And uh, they actually showed us how to make the chicken tenders. That's the number one selling item on the menu. Yeah, edamame. Yeah, that's, that's why these penalties, come on, Zach, you got to break one. 
You got to break one, Zach. Come on. Keep going. Keep going, baby. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. It's about time he broke one. Right? But yeah, cheddar's... Um, my favorite thing there was the buffalo chicken wrapper. And also the New Orleans pasta is pretty good, too. And we also had the onion ring tower. I mean, I still remember a lot of the menu. I haven't been there since I worked there. I haven't been to one since. <laughs> All right, got to take advantage of this field position. No turning the ball over. Man, he is so shifty. Like, there's nothing there, and he's still got seven yards. What's the flag? Jeez. Momentum killer. <laughs> Drive killing penalties, man. Jeez, my heart rate is 113. I'm just sitting here. 113. My resting heart rate usually is in the 40s. Usually when I'm sitting still, 113. I guess it's the adrenaline of watching a game. Ah. Here comes a passing down without our best receiver. Mm, yeah, he might be able to gain about 10 pounds or so. I can see that. All right, what do you do here? Seriously, what do you do here? That's not going to get it done. That's not going to get it done. Our kicking's been pretty inconsistent this year. I don't I'm not very faithful here. Good. All right, six-point game. Got to step up on defense. Got to finish drives. All right, water break. Water break. I need to go to the uh, I need to go to the fish store and buy some assassin snails because in my fish tank right now there is a snail infestation and the thing is I didn't buy any snails for that tank they I had a snail or two hitchhike on the plants 
that I bought for the tank. And there's just hundreds of snails in there now. So you can buy these snails called assassin snails that eat snails. Colorado, woof, down 10, they, their offense is just so bad. How many points is Tennessee going to score today? Jeez. I'm going to put that uh, Notre Dame game on one of my screens. Get rid of the Georgia game because that's a blowout. All right, quick bathroom break. Yeah, Colorado's disappointing. That's just a bad offense, guys. My longest ever bike ride today, 38 miles. I'm going to go for 40 next week. The State Fair of Texas is so expensive. Like, my sister's in town, and we looked into going, and it's just too expensive. I don't see how, like, the average family can afford to go. Like, not, it's not just, not, I'm not saying it's expensive to get in, but um, the tickets, like the coupons that you use to, you know, do things at the fair. They're a dollar each. Big defensive stand here. We need a big. De need to start strong on first down. Get him! Get him! Ah! Can't tackle again. Once again, cannot tackle. It all starts on first down. Oh, that someone finally tackled. Wow. All right, big third down here. Kari Coleman, he didn't play last week. All right, big third down here. Need a three and out. All right, we're running five down linemen. Here's the snap. They're dropping back to pass. He has him. Oh, you got you to gotta finish that tackle. Nope, he didn't get it. He was out of balance. Oh, you gave him that much forward progress? Really? He gave him that much? 
Are you serious? They're not even going to measure that? I would review that. I don't know. I don't know about that. I don't know, man. False start. Get him from behind. Uh, I remember when we used to be a good tackling program. Nope, nope, nope. He's short. Oh, come on, line judge. I try to drink at least a gallon to a gallon and a half of water every day minimum. Yeah, I can see that angle, Jay Book. Finally got a tackle for loss, finally. The run defense has gotten a lot better, but still just can't the tackling is inconsistent. The the penetration is there. We're getting off blocks, but we're not finishing tackle. Zone blitz. Uh, bummer. We ran a zone blitz, and they ran it. No, the linebackers are just bad, period. The linebackers are bad, period. Ooh, that field goal Michigan kick just veered in. Notre Dame looks like they're driving. And they call timeout. Disappointing, man. Run defense.
Who says this sandwich taco from Taco Bell? Is it a sandwich or a taco? Which side? Nice, nice play by Cincinnati's defense there. Oh, almost an interception for Cincinnati. Almost. Probably should have been holding on Notre Dame as well. Oh, finish the sack. Finish the sack. Oh, did Notre Dame just do a fake punt? Was that a fake punt? I wasn't paying attention. I just saw they went for it on 4th and 10, which they wouldn't do. I guess they did go for it on 4th and 10. Trick play. Oh. Big third down here. Interception for Michigan. Man, this tight end is eating a Cincinnati alive right now. All right, big third down here. We got to get off the field on third and long. Yeah, I'm surprised I went for it on fourth and ten. Jeez, we cannot get off the field on third downs. Once again, the linebackers are non-existent. Touchdown. Touchdown. Mm. It's, a t and it's interception for Cincinnati. Such a disappointing defensive team. I remember when we used to have good defense. I remember.
I just don't think we have the passing game to get back in this. I just don't see it. Don't have the passing game and don't have the uh, ability to get stops on defense. USC's up again. Man, so much for Colorado, right? Cheese it commercials, yeah. No interest in that bachelorette, none. Cincinnati's offense isn't very good. They're going to have to be very opportunistic today. Come on, Darius. That's that's Come on, Darius. That was almost your third turnover today. He's had such a bad game today. <laughs> Michigan to score again. Looks like it. Where is Zach Evans? That's not going to get it done. Thank you. 
And Zach Evans did not touch the ball once on that drive. Still can't tackle. Because they are ranked number eight, even though the AP poll is not a good barometer of how good teams really are.
Offside. Great. What a great use of a timeout.
He didn't get it, but they're going to go for it on fourth down. They're going to go for it here. He's not going to get fired by the Cardinals. He didn't get it. He didn't get it. We stopped him. Wow. We stopped him. Goal line stand. Yeah, Kingsbury's not going to get fired for the Cardinals, but I could see that happening. Uh, the thing about Kingsbury is not a recruiter. He doesn't recruit. He needs to be in the NFL where he can have someone run his defense and doesn't have to worry about recruiting. Yeah, I don't. I, we're not. We're not built to go 98 yards here or 99 yards. It's not how this team's built. Jeez, Zach Evans. See, I. Bijan Robinson has got twice as many carries today as Zach Evans has. I mean, come on. Uh, I. I. It's too early to. Get rid of Cliff Kingsbury, in my opinion. Even if they don't make the playoffs, I think they're still playing better. I think Michigan will be unbeaten by the time they play Ohio State at the end of the year. Man, Wisconsin, they've just been... You know, they lose, they've lost to good teams, but they're losing badly to these good teams. That's not going to do us any good. Zach Evans, again, not on the field on a third and two. Jeez. We just need to play with more sense of urgency here, guys. I think Michigan will run the table, yes. I do. They'll have to beat Iowa or whoever, probably Iowa in the Big Ten title game. But I do, I do think they'll beat Ohio State. Mm. 
No sense of urgency at all. There it is. Finally, a big passing play. Not surprised this Notre Dame game is low scoring so far. He doesn't get enough touches, Tay Barber. Where's Zach Evans? I know we're in passing mode, but he's still a threat in the pass game, especially in, with screens. That doesn't do us any good. These middle of the field passes that go for four yards takes a lot of time off the clock. What a move by number 33. Great job. <laughs> Zach Evans needs to come back in here. No sense of urgency at all. And then we're going to keep taking our time. Too much time coming off the clock. That's a TD, but we still took too much time there. Too much time. But that was a 99-yard drive, so good for the offense. You know, I'm going to give them credit there. Arkansas, 37 nothing loser. My model had that picked. We were in the same situation last week. SMU is, we pretty much, SMU is able to pretty much run out the last five minutes. Yeah, I just don't know. You know they're going to keep giving it to number five. We just took too much time there, I think. It was way too long of a drive. Man, this, this Notre Dame game has been a punt fest so far. Yeah, that drive took five minutes. That's just too, too much time. Five minutes.
Yep, I just don't know if our defense has what it takes to uh, get the ball back. I don't. If Texas had scored there, I would have stopped the stream and gone to my niece's party. <laughs> but instead I stayed on. By the way, the spread was four, right? It closed at four. So if you have Texas, you're going to push unless you got them at three and a half. I can't remember the last time we recovered an onside kick. I think we never did when I was there because we never needed to. Let's see if that touchdown can uh, get our defense fired up. How is Michigan not in the top 10? That's what I want to know. Anybody who's seen Michigan this year knows they're a top 10 team and they're not. Penalty for what? All right, got to get, got to, got to step up here. You know they're going to give it to number five every play. All right, give it to number five, and he has a lot of room. Man, just like last week. Yeah, I don't think we should have onside kicked it either, but it is what it is. All right, they got a first down.
All right, we got to stop on first down. All right, big second down here. I don't see why we're not. We're still playing our 4 2 5. All right, big third down here. Do they pass here? What do you think? Let me get that for you, Ian. Big third down here. I wonder if they pass. I don't think they will. They could. I could see them running a, a fake to the running back and quarterback keeper, which is what SMU did last week in the same situation. Here you go, Ian. I'm going to leave it up in five, four, three, two, one. They're going to do a quarterback keeper watch. Quarterback keeper. Nope. Ah, oh, crap. Gosh, we just can't tackle. We just can't tackle. Just couldn't tackle today, guys. That was its difference. We had them stopped and... Had them stopped. And that's the game right there. If that didn't illustrate the game today, I don't know what does. All right, guys, I told you I'd just go to the end of that game, so uh, let's see where we stand before I sign off here. Cincinnati touchdown.
All right, guys. I appreciate everyone for tuning in. But like I said, I'm going to call it a night. See you, everybody.